Today is April 1st. The season is underway. Jared Jones gets 10 punch outs in his debut, and your Pirates are 4 0. Let's talk Pirates baseball. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast, where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother, Jake. What's up, Jake? Hey, man, how's it going? Good. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Why wouldn't it be great? (laughs) Why is it great? I mean, the the Pirates won the first uh, opening day. What? Four games. Four games? They won? Yeah. yeah. All of them? Yeah. yeah. All four. All four? And Key yeah, Brian we got Hayes, them brooms out. Key Brian yeah, Hayes got multiple totally hits. Totally missed three games. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, this is a little bit of a April Fool's thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I tried so, to play it cool there for a minute. You yeah, know what I mean? So your name's not Josh. Yes, it is. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to pause this and then we'll get back. Say, say bye, Keely. My name's not Keely. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a let's go, Bucks. <laughs> let's go, Bucks. All right, we're back here. Uh, we just want to have a little bit of fun on. April Fool's Day, and of course, she always wants to to jump in and do stuff. So, what's your, what's your best April Fool's joke you've done? Uh, definitely when I when I had uh, all of my uh, all of the uh, like professors at college believing that I was dropping out. I had the I had the president of the college in on it. I mean, so that was definitely the one. That's that's pretty. I cool. had them coming in and pulling me out of class to help sign papers. And they were so upset. And it was like a tech school, so it's a different atmosphere than like yeah. university, whatever, right? <laughs> I had the same people for, I had like two instructors, basically, for all my stuff, right? And it's yeah. just kind of the way it went. And they were just so upset. They were like, you're doing fine. And I was like, I can't handle it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, and they were all in. I had a I had a buddy of mine, you know, uh, you know Tyler. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, we got in an argument out in the hallway where he was like screaming at me and I was just, it, dude, it was, we had, it, it, we started it two weeks before it happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's planning right there. That's planning. <laughs> That's definitely the best one. And I kept saying all the time, like, I don't do April Fool's jokes because I joke every day of the year. That's my day yeah. off. And that was how we set most of it up. Yeah. I was grade school. I had I had my school convinced we were moving to Colorado. I remember that. My dad was my dad was gonna quit his job and sell peanuts at Coors Field. I can't believe they <laughs> bought that. Uh, so stupidly funny. Yeah. So anyway, uh very exciting times here. Because yeah. we just finished the sweep. Yeah, I mean, and that's not an April Fool's joke. That's not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> I mean, you you come into this weekend saying Oh, the Pirates are going to be 4 0. They're going to sweep the Marlins in Miami. Um, Bailey Falter is going to start one of those games. And that's enough right there where you're going to be like, it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and to boot, saying like, oh, and there's, this team's going to score 31 runs. And you're going to say, listen, I'm optimistic, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's so you know, we, and we've talked about this. I don't know how many times. It's so hard to get a sweep, and it's even harder to sweep a four game series on the road. I mean, your goal, uh, yeah, like when boot. you right when you look at the season and you're saying, all right, ideally, right, you want to you want if you're a good teams are going to swing more of these things than 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 whatever teams, but like you want to win a series on the road, right? No matter what. Mm-hmm. Any three game series you want to win, whether it's home or road, two games to one, you want to win that series. That's the most important thing. You go to these these four game sets, 
and you want to split, especially on the road. You'd like at home, like good teams, to say we want to win this series. Mm-hmm. On the road, you're okay with a split. You really are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was, uh, you know, wrap it up quick, and then it's like, oh, sweet. Now Bailey Falter's going to throw, and we're good. We got the series. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to have your comments about the lineups and all that stuff. But, guys, come on. It's a, it's, it's a Sunday lineup for a reason. The reason is you've already got the – you already have the series locked down. You've got your three games, and I you have to give these guys days off. There's no better day to do it yeah. than to do it when you've already got the series locked up. You have 26 guys for a reason. You're going to ask those guys, namely speaking, Williams and DeLay at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're going to ask them to step up, and they have to. And if they don't, that's the story of your season, right? If all you get done is your core players, and when they get days off, you lose, that's that's what your season's going to be. You're going to say, well, we're not deep. We're not a good enough team to be a good team. Yeah. If you can have guys step up off the bench, step up and play well, it's going to be different, right? Mm-hmm. So. And, and I, I mean, I saw good things out of both of them. I mean, not like I'm like impressed with their play or whatnot, but like, I don't know, Lika puts a good swing on a ball down in the zone and gets a hit. Um, say what you want about the defensive play was a hit either way. And delay laying that bunt down, like that's, Mm-hmm. That squeeze. Well, and yeah, and even Alika's stuff, bunt, man. and Alika's bunt, yeah. and he he was he was moving it down the line, right? And so mm-hmm. he put pressure on the pitcher. The pitcher drops the ball, absolutely. Um, if he doesn't, he's probably out at first with a good throw, but he's not able to throw that ball. So both of those bunts, and I mean, Jake, how many times have we seen guys just not get bunts down? Mm-hmm. Let's not even talk about whether they're safe. We can't even do a sacrifice bunt anymore. And you had two of them back to back. And yeah. we're talking the first series of the season. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't know. This is a little bit important to me, the fact that it was our backups doing it. That's that's to me, that's important because like you're getting mm. a shot and I need you to do this for yeah. me. Yeah. Well and they went out and got the job done. Let's also say, how about you get into a situation where you need a bunt down? Those are your guys that you have sitting there, and you're like, hey, we, we actually, we can count on them. Yep. Let's pinch hit here and get that bunt down. Mm-hmm. If it's a situation where, you know what I'm saying, where where you need to do that. Now, yeah. obviously, the game today calls for a lot less bunts. I was actually interested. I thought it was interesting to see them do it. I mean, when you're the away team, you don't play for one run, especially when Bednar's already out of the game. <laughs> You're playing for two because that yeah. they got a guy at second. So I think I think I think that would have been a different story had Alika just just sacrificed him over and got out. You got one out, you're not squeezing. Right. Yeah, you don't do two bunts. But but that's right. what I'm saying. Even Alika laying down that bunt, like you're playing for one run there. Yeah. Not two. And I mean, you're also just saying, like, what's your confidence level in Alika getting a hit here? get some sort of production. Yeah, You also see a team that, I mean, like the Pirates won four straight games, but there have been situations with a guy on second, nobody out, and we're not able to bring him in. I mean, we just played how many innings on Thursday? Um, 12 innings because the 10th and 11th, we didn't get a run across. Yeah. So I guess it is fair to say, let's get that run across. And you also had a Marlins team on Thursday who went three innings without getting a run across. So actually in that case, you're like, Hey, let's play for one. They can't score. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's kind of way you feel, right? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. And that just goes like the, the game changes. Every game changes. The situations change. You have updated information. You, you, you watch what's going on in the games prior. Like it's more than just analytics. Yeah, it is interesting, and uh, you know, I I still think you don't play for for one, and I think that's a lot of times why. I mean, the away teams actually in in extra innings with the Manfred runner, the away teams have fared better, and I think a lot of that is probably in the the fact that they're not playing for one run, they mm-hmm. are trying to score more than one run, and it's working out for them more times than not, in that sense. So. I, uh, yeah, 
like I said, I wouldn't do it on a normal situation, but maybe with Alika up. And the other the other piece of that is is like, what are you getting out of delay if you do move him up? Because now you got delay. And do you do you trust him to get him in? That's the other thing. You know what I mean? Delay was 0 for 3 in the game. Yeah, 0 for 3. No strikeouts, though. He's, I mean, put the ball in play, so maybe that is the situation yeah. that you go for. Um, either way, execution was there. We end up tacking on another run. Uh, it was... Uh, I don't think that the Pirates have played a complete game yet. I could agree with that. I don't think they've played a complete game. There's been some defensive things. There's been some base running things. Uh, starting pitching was bad. Um, you know, really even, I mean, 17 strikeouts in the opener, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, I know those extra innings, right. But like Lizardo's a beast too. So I get that, yeah. but there was a little bit of, you know, they didn't strike out 17 times. Right. So that's, that's the thing I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess we still had the, the, the cruise air uh, on, uh, Saturday, Saturday was a, a, was a pretty good game. You could call that a complete game. I still feel like there were some things. But sure. I mean, it's the blowout, you know what I mean, of, of the group. Yeah. So there is a little bit of that. But um, yeah, let's so let's get into some of this. Uh, uh let's do a couple quick hits. We'll get back into the Marlins series here in a second. I like that opening conversation. We kind of talked about some of this already. Paul Skeens made his season debut in Louisville on Saturday. Three innings, five Ks, no walks, no hits. Nasty. Nasty. Not surprising. Very impressive. So they talked about it on MLB Network. What was it? 20, 21 pitchers, pitches registered in triple digits. Are you serious? I don't 21 think I, fastballs. 21? Something like that. I don't remember that. I know he averaged 100.8, I think. His fastball did. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know about I don't know about twenty one. I don't know. I mean, maybe right. I didn't see that. I, I didn't. I wasn't even sure he threw much more than twenty one pitches. And three innings, five. I mean, he's like nobody's on base. Right. <laughs> he only faced fifteen guys. I guess yeah, you're throwing twenty one pitches for sure. Yeah. So I don't. Um, that was a dumb statement. It's okay. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, we got a lot of comments about he's, and, and this is not just from Pirates fans. Like I, I heard it from a couple different places. He's ready. I don't know why you're doing this. He's ready. Just get him there. He's one of your best pitchers. And I, I just can't help but think like, Hey, the whole reason he's down there is the five day rotation. He threw one game. He yeah. hasn't pitched on five, you know, he hasn't pitched on a fifth day yet. And he's only throwing three innings right now. And he's only, he only threw three innings, which says he's still, he's not ready. Unless you're trying to say, bring him up and pitch him in the bullpen, he's not ready. So right. calm down a little bit. The talent is there without question. Yeah, no one's questioning. I don't even think that I'm worried now, as we were last year, where we were saying, well, there's some command issues. I'm not even worried about that, Jake. Right. He's good. Command looks fine to me. Yeah. We even saw we saw kind of the evolution of that the arm side miss on the changeup, and it feels like he's dialing that in. So, yeah. like this guy's an animal, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's not going to miss for long because he's he, he's special, right? It's literally about let's see him go five six innings, at least twice in a row, <laughs> right? I mean, am yeah. I at least twice in a row? Yeah, at least. So, no, I'm not not going there. Okay, Canyon Smith and Jigba cleared waivers, accepted his assignment to Indy. He's going to Indy. Ali Sanchez cleared as well. Uh, he's elected free agency. Um, no news on Jackson Wolf yet. It's possible he hasn't been placed on waivers. That's normal. Uh, I saw a post from Ethan Houlihan that said uh, it takes about two days to clear waivers. And you've got seven, really, before you have to make a decision on what you're doing with him. And so he doesn't have to be placed on waivers on the first day. So if they're trying to work out a trade before they place him on waivers, then that's, 
you know, that's possibly what they're trying to do. A little bit more value there than what you'd get out of the other two. So yeah. there is a chance that a team does bite on that. And if not, then he goes on waivers and then there's a whole other process on that. So uh, we'll hear soon. But it's, you know, if, if he clears and we get to keep a hold of him for depth, I think that's a huge win. Not mm-hmm. that I'm super excited about him, but you know what I mean? It, if you have a guy like that and it's like, oh, crap, we had you know, three guys go down or something like that, and you start to pinch into that, well, Skeens is already up, Jones is still here, Ortiz is in the rotation already, we really don't want to go with Rowanzi. You'd rather throw a guy like Jackson Wolf up there than like make some kind of rash move on if maybe Ashcraft isn't ready to step in or like even worse – like Bubba Chandler before he's ready or something like that. You know what I mean? So that depth is important. I know there's, I'm not even like tipping the, like chipping the iceberg here or whatever, however that, whatever that stupid statement is tripping over my words here tonight. Anyway, you know, you're not even Eric Lauer, Domingo, you know what I mean? Like there's other guys down there too. So, you know what I mean? That's a pretty big depth thing, but, Man, they, you know the you know the deal. You can never have yep. too many pitchers. Nope. And I feel like that's it, especially when and it's, for some reason this isn't on here. JT Brubaker traded this yeah. week uh, to the Yankees for a player to be named later. They threw in some bonus pool uh, allowance or bonus. How's that work? Yeah, it's it's not real money, money right? No, it's just it's... what you're allowed to spend. Yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting move there. Um, uh, from what we're hearing, six or seven teams, maybe, I don't really know, uh, might've been interested. So I don't know how this, you know, I don't know how this stuff works. It seemed early on like, oh yeah, for me, like just my opinion, not what I thought the pirates were doing, but I was like, he's an arbitration guy. You're not going to really use him if you like everybody in front of him. So you may as well deal him. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's not, I mean, it sounds yeah, like people just, were calling though. Yeah, and, and and you have an arm like I don't want to say an arm like his, but but you do you do. I mean, he's he's a serviceable major league pitcher. He's not a bum. Yeah. And he's not an ace. Yeah. But he's a serviceable major league pitcher. He's a fit any rotation, three, four, you know, in the rotation. Four, five, um, yeah. Four yeah, any depending on the team, anywhere from three to five. And depending on how he comes back from the surgery. Right. Right. I'm saying four, and, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, you might as well, you you got, you just got a couple guys just right on the cusp. And realistically, I don't see Brubaker fitting into the rotation. I was wondering what you would think about that. And there's also the idea that like, hey, if Brubaker comes back and we can get him to throw that fastball, uh, the, 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 the two seamer with the slider and just work him out of the bullpen. Like he could be, we've talked about that before. He could be, he's got strikeout stuff. The slider's really good. And if, if he could, if he could throw the fastball with that slider, I feel like you've got something there, uh, out of the bullpen, but it's also like, if he doesn't want to pitch out of the bullpen, this could be one of those things where they say, we'll honor that. This Mm -hmm. is the path we have for you, but maybe somebody else would have another one. I think there's probably a little bit of like, what if he doesn't come back in July? He's, he's saying he's going to be back before the All-Star break. What if he doesn't? Yeah. What if he's not back until mid-August? What if it doesn't work well? You know what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. that there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of unknown, and I wonder if we won't know the player to be named later until we find out when he comes off the IL or even how he does when he comes off. Like if he stinks, yeah, it's like you're not getting that guy. But if he's really good, you'd be like, all right, we'll part with that guy. This has been very valuable to us. I don't really know. Like I said, I don't think there's a whole lot of... I don't know how long of, they have... I don't know how long that... Like, how long do you have to state the player? You know what I mean? I, like, you know what I've rule? heard? I've seen a couple things. Uh, I think Gary mentioned on Twitter to, to somebody else that, like, we never even got our player to be named later in the Corey Dickerson trade. So, like, <laughs> I don't understand what? that. I don't... I didn't remember that. But uh, he made that comment. So I was like, oh, dang. Um... I think it's like six months. I mean, I think you've got time. A lot of time. It's later. I've seen it, you know, I I believe I've seen it when I'm looking through transactions. I've seen it like off season. All of a sudden, player to be named later is announced in the off season. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's wild. I don't really know. Yeah, it is wild. So overall, 
Um, he's a good pitcher, though. He has depth. Uh, we've been saying his name when we're talking about depth. And so, yeah. I don't know, man. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see how the season the season plays out. Um, so that's as far that's all we have here for for the quick touch. Let's get back to the Marlins series because it's a sweep and we're excited and it's full. We're four and zero. We're sitting in first place, um, with two of your guys. Now we talked a lot about predictions and hot takes and all those things. And we're high on O'Neill Cruz like everyone is and should be. And you and I are both high on Jack Sawinski. And that's a that's kind of a, you know, that's a toss-up for a lot of people. But we're high on him. Mm-hmm. Not a great start, but come on. Like four lefties. He didn't even play the first two <laughs> games, uh, like as yeah. far as start. And there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of something to that. You got to let guys get in a routine. And if you're not a guy who's literally playing this whole game, then you got to let that routine kind of play out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You Mm -hmm. Like, even if it is a routine of not playing all the time, which I believe Jack is going to be playing more times than not. Mm -hmm. Lazardo's a beast. He's very good. Yeah. Uh, AJ Puck, I don't think necessarily will work out as a starter. He's been a reliever for like 180 games of his career. This is his first major league start. And he kind of showed that a little bit, right? But mm-hmm. in the first few innings, like he has strikeout stuff. He yeah. always has. And so that's a tough matchup for a lefty too. Mm-hmm. And they kind of made the comment like, hey, we've got three lefties in our lineup who generally struggle against lefties. Now, Cruz least of the of the bunch because he can still do damage. Yeah. Against a lefty. Telez actually has a higher batting average against left-handed pitching than he does against right-handed pitching for his career. He's not a platoon type player. He does all of his damage though against righties. And <laughs> when I say he's got a better batting average and on base percentage, Jake, like he's fine against lefties. He's mm-hmm. going to give you everything he gives you against righties except the power. And yeah. like like I said, uh, the batting averages are like 230 against righties and 240 against lefties. So it's not like it's awesome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But yeah. it is like, hey, he handles them. He still puts together good at bats. He's, yeah, he's still the same, basically the same hitter. He's without power. Without power, right? And so... And, and, but the home run on Sunday, he goes into that o for mm-hmm. o and three, and I'm, I'll talk about this a, a little bit later. But he was o for three with three Ks, and I think there's something to getting those looks the whole game that made him ready to have the at bat he had, right? And, and like mm-hmm. I said, I have things to say about that, and I'll get into it, but. It's the same for all these guys. Pinch hitting is not easy. Game one, all of us hits a pinch hit home run to make it look easy, but it's not easy, right? And right. some guys need to know that they're in the game to be ready for certain situations. And that's not like a, well, if he was good, he would be. That's not true. Actually, most of the guys who are good at pinch hitting are guys who aren't good enough to start. Yeah. Because they're used to that, right? So mm-hmm. before you go off, uh, you know, yelling at your radio or whatever. That's just not true. Um, but let's talk about some of the things that happened this week because you did have four straight lefties. You did have kind of some lineups that you didn't expect with O'Neill Cruz down in the lineup. You changed things up. I mean, before the first game, Jake, they interviewed the players, who's going to hit the first home run? And like two or three of them was like, well, probably Cruz because he's our leadoff guy. And then he didn't hit leadoff one game. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I don't think he's going to against lefties. And the more you I mean, I don't think so either. I guess when you're looking at what's going on, what would be the reason (laughs) to change anything? Right. But, right. All right. So let's talk about some things. Three home runs in the first game. We had the Cruz home run. We had Olivares, the pinch hit I just talked about. Reynolds also homered in that one. Mitch Keller's game one, uh, not necessarily sharp. What do you have there? Yeah. I mean, so I rewatched this game because I had to work, and, I, and you sent me the text. Watch Keller, see what yeah. you see. Didn't have great command of the sweeper. Couldn't land it in the zone. 
and and they kind of just were spitting on it a lot. And then they were getting decent pitches to hit. And even like, I mean, you had the, the air on what uh, could have been a, a crucial double play. Yeah, there's just the, he didn't get hit hard. He okay, really didn't get hit that hard. Well, that's what I was and, wondering. And, was- and it's I was sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm just you can't get them to chase because you're not landing any of these pitches, any of the the slurves in the zone. And when when you're when you can't throw it for a strike, they know it. Yeah. He still had that he still had that cutter in the two seam working, man. He did though. He did get hit hard. I mean I'm looking, there's several one, two, three, four, five. Well that's Five, six, seven, eight. There's like eight hard hits against him. That's 95 plus, right? So mm-hmm. that's any ball that goes over 95 is considered a hard hit. But when I hover over him, I mean, we're talking 106. 112 was one of them. Uh, 98, 100, 102, 108, 100, and 109.8. Uh, I think a lot of those, the 112 was Jake Berger. Uh, he had 212 hits that, that day. The other one, uh, the other one was against Luis Ortiz, but I mean, they hit some balls hard yeah. off of him. So, but it felt like it wasn't, I don't know, all in all, I mean, it's four earned runs and, and one that was unearned, uh, and, and only three strikeouts. So mm-hmm. like you said, they're yeah, spitting on sharp. the sweeper. It, w- it wasn't sharp. And I think that's, right. yeah, I think you put that well. It's going to get better, right? I, I don't think there was anything that I was too necessarily worried about. It's just first season. Hey, it's last just, year he gave up four runs in Cincinnati to start off the year two, and he settled in after that. Yeah, it was it was just a little frustrating to see some of the some of the guys step up on opening day and just mow people down. Uh, from other teams, yeah. yeah. Corbin yeah. Burns was league. great. Yeah, you had. Yeah. I mean, even Lazardo really uh, looked great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there was some. There were some guys like seriously shoving on opening day, and yeah. I think th- is is that a little bit of a testament? I mean, I think we understand right that while Mitch Keller is a very good pitcher, and while I believe in Mitch Keller to be a very good pitcher. He probably best slots for a really good team in a number two spot. Mm-hmm. And I I mean, you could say he's probably fitting to be like, if he would have gone to Baltimore, he'd be their ace too. But not after they got Burns. Right. He okay, would yeah. fall in under Burns, right? And so like that was a big deal. And I don't know. I'm not, you know what I mean? So I'm just... I'm just spitballing a little bit here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. if he goes to Miami, does he get that start above Lazardo or does Lazardo get it? I mean, I think Lazardo probably gets the ball, but I think if Lazardo would have been traded to Pittsburgh, it'd been Mitch Keller. I yeah. think they're close. You know what I mean? They kind of had a similar path where it was a little bit slow going to kind of mm-hmm. pick up on things. And so maybe a little bit of the same stuff, but you're right. I see what you're saying. There were some guys out there dealing on opening day and getting everybody super excited. And... We did it a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't Mitch Keller. Um, not worried. Bullpen goes six and a third, gives up one hit, and Luis Ortiz, two innings, was just electric. That was the Luis Ortiz when he came up that we were like, oh, oh, what do we have here? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was like, yeah. oh, maybe this bullpen thing is right. I don't know. Yeah. Because we saw a start today where I'd like, Maybe we put Luis Ortiz in there. <laughs> or maybe we do what's best for Luis Ortiz because he looks great out of the bullpen. Yeah. Maybe we do him better by keeping him in that role instead of... Just suffer through the falter starts? Well, I would hope it's somebody other than falter. I mean, Quinn Priester was dealing today in AAA. I mean, why don't we just swap them? They're on the same schedule. They both pitch today or Sunday. Yeah. For, you know, for whatever day you're listening to this. I mean, if, if Priester and Falter are pitching on the same day, that's an easy switch out. I thought yeah. Priester could have could have made this roster. I mean, I mm-hmm. I was vocal about that. Um, but he had nine nine strikeouts and five and two thirds today in in Indy. I mean, just the thing is, and this is what I said was going to happen with Priester. He's shown all he has to show down there. Yeah, 
He has to see if those pitches get guys out here. And he's mm-hmm. not going to be able to find that out in AAA. Nope. But to me, it gives you a better chance than Bailey Falter does. Yeah. I think we have a little few options that give you a better chance than Bailey Falter. Bring Jackson Wolf back from waivers, put him in a rotation. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, listen <laughs> to this, man. We talked about the bullpen right there. Fleming, Stratton, Barucky, Chapman, Ortiz, Hernandez, who got his first career save in that first game. They go six and a third, uh, give up one hit, and that was Hunter Stratton. And then in game two, it's uh, Ryder, Ryan, and Fleming, four and two-thirds inning. Uh, they followed Perez. Three innings by Fleming, one run. Game yeah, three. Solid outing. Yeah, Barucky, Stratton, Hernandez, and Bednar. Uh, three, in, uh, three and a third. And then today, on Sunday, Luis Ortiz with another two innings. Barucky threw, Chapman threw, and I'll give you a second on that one. Bednar threw, and Hunter Stratton threw. Bednar gives up the home run on a splitter that was in a terrible location. Uh, it was a bad pitch. Mm-hmm. Every other pitch he threw was great. Yeah. Everything you want to see from Bednar. The day before, even better. He looked, uh, I think Pitching Ninja called it unfair. Um, so now let me go back because I know you had a comment about what you saw from Chapman today. Dude. So I my phone propped up at work, right? And I'm just watching it. And I'm a younger kid over to my right. I'm like, watch this, dude. 101. Gas. I see, here comes another one. 100 miles an hour. Slider just falling off the screen. I'm like, this is fun to watch. Uh, fandom, as you were calling it before, what we were talking before, this, it, it, it comes into play, man. And I found myself being like, I love watching this dude in a pirate's uniform. I saw a couple things during that at bat that I really um that I kind of laughed at a little bit, but also uh what I saw from the Jazz Chisholm at bat and Tim Anderson right after him. Mm-hmm. The pitches, the sequence that he threw, and he, you know, when he strikes you out, he does a little maybe he did a little talking to Jazz, maybe there was something there. But Jazz kind of gave him a smile and nodded his head. He's obviously not taking offense to it. I saw, and I thought, when I saw Jazz, I was like, there was a little bit of respect there. Mm -hmm. Jazz is, you know, he he knew he was beat. Yeah. And he knew that he was not going to hit that. And he kind of gave him a little, yeah, dang it, I could have got Chapman, right? Yeah. And then Tim Anderson follows with, I mean, just a great sequence. And <laughs> Chapman finishes that at bat to end the inning with that frozen, you know, legs out, just frozen, looking tough or mean or whatever. And Tim Anderson gave him a big smile and walking away, nodding his head. And it was another one of those like, oh, and that's what it felt like, right? And they showed mm-hmm. Chapman when they came back from the break, they showed him from the front where he was all m- mean mugging and you saw him crack with a little <laughs> s- little smirk on his face. And it was like, because he knew like, he, it's not a tough thing. Like he, he kind it was like a, a way of saying like hat tip, man, you're, you've been doing this for a long time. I was impressed yeah. with that from two guys actually who yeah. maybe you wouldn't expect that from. Right. So I thought that was a pretty cool moment. Um, you got Ryder Ryan in that first, uh, getting his first win. Uh, that was the second game, right? Yeah, the second game. Hernandez in the first game, first career save. And then on Saturday, first career win. We're finally getting to it. Jared Jones. Nasty. Five and two thirds, three hits, three runs, two walks. 10 strikeouts, 22 swings and misses. Couple numbers here for you, Jake. 40 sliders, 10 out of 17 swings were whiffs. That's 59%. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Nine of them were called strikes. 38 four seams. 11 out of 26 were whiffs. That's 42%. Still a lot on the fastball. Four of them were called strikes. Getting the fastball and curveball over 2,700 RPMs. And if you, you know, I don't dig a ton into spin, I don't pay a lot of attention, but basically, that's a high number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the total average of all of his pitches was over 2,500. Uh, spinning the ball well, throwing it hard, 99.9 max velo. Kudos to Brian Reynolds for the throw from the outfield over 100. Um, but Jared Jones, uh, that was one of the most exciting debuts by a pitcher that I can remember. There's a short list. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to see a lot of it. I went back and had to rewatch some of it. Dude, it was just filthy. He's filthy. When you are watching this game, probably more so live, right? Because you, you already knew what happened before you watched it. When you're watching it live, there's those nerves of like this next pitch could be a bomb. This next pitch could blow the whole thing up or whatever. And man, you just, as a fan, you couldn't help but watch that and say, hey, I think we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. We know that Skeens threw earlier in the day and was dominant. We know that he's just a routine away from being up here, mm -hmm. right? Now you got Jones, who is as advertised, showing why he earned a spot and a lot of buzz nationally about what happened. And, and you still got Keller, who you like. This one, two, three. Mm -hmm. However it shapes up, right? But all of a sudden, the Pirates have three legit arms. And you're like, we're, we're going to be okay. This is new for yeah. us, Jake. Pirates fans right. don't have pitching, right? We had to go get A.J. Burnett. We had to go fix Liriano. We had to fix Volquez for that minute he was here. You know what I mean? Like all these guys that were really good here, we either fixed them or we went out and kind of got them or or whatever. Except for what, Garrett Cole? I mean, Tyone had his moments, but the injuries just kind of got in the way there. But like Garrett Cole, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We had that. Even like when Joe Musgrove was here, he wasn't this. I right. felt like a little bit similar to Keller, right? He was a little bit similar to Keller, like he's doing the things, like he's going to be good. We all knew it. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of a little bit of weight on it, a little bit of bad starts. It's just going to balloon the ERA, but he's a really good pitcher. And this is different, man. This feels different. And I'm not saying everything's going to go that way. I'm just saying how I felt watching him pitch on Saturday, right? right? right. And yeah. I know that he's going to take his lumps. And I know that everything is, you know... They gotta play the games. Yeah, my big my biggest takeaway from it is I'm you. We're, what you said, pitching isn't coming to the Pirates very often, and I'm used to watching other people's pitchers and highlights. And just being yeah. like, dang man, like these dudes are so good. I just wish the Pirates. And I found myself going, dang, this dude is so good, and he is a bucko. You know what I mean? I felt like I was watching somebody else's pitcher. Because we that's what we've been watching for yeah. so long, right? That was an exciting debut. We've had O'Neill Cruz was very exciting, right? When he came mm -hmm. up and in you know, a couple days, we finally got the home run. We had the we had the throw across the infield, we had the sprint speed, we had the whole thing. And that was super exciting. But that doesn't happen on the pitching side, and it is it did Saturday. It happened yeah. Saturday, right? Yeah. We'll see how it continues. Obviously, baseball is still baseball. But mm -hmm. let we're just talking about Saturday here. And the, that's the way it felt on Saturday. Incredibly impressed. Yeah. Um, I, I I want to talk more about it, right? But we do have a show that we have to keep moving on. So uh, we have to move on to Sunday and Bailey Falter mm -hmm. and the absolute non-competitiveness to start the game. We knew it was going to be rough. He's so far away from throwing a strike to the first two guys. 
Um, the jokes came out. Everybody was basically giving up. Um, when he gives up the Grand Slam, we were actually just sitting down to eat here. And I walk in and our, our mom and dad was out uh, for Easter today. And so I was like, we get and sit down and our, our mom's a big Pirates fan too, guys. Let's not kid around. Like she's, you know, what's going on in the game? <laughs> you know, I go in there and I said, I said, well, that's a grand slam. We're down. Uh, we're down five, nothing. We don't even have an out. And she goes, what are we doing? <laughs> Which is what she said, oh, for crying out loud. And like, is what she said. And she's like, why are they even throw this guy? He shouldn't even be there. <laughs> it was funny. And then she's like, well, we're not coming back now. Not with that lineup. <laughs> and I was uh, like, you are basically on Twitter and you don't even know it. <laughs> um, That's funny. The game, you know, you've already won the series. You do kind of swallow it. You do kind of say, well, let, you know, it's the first inning. Chip away. See what you can do. Uh, and, and I kind of said, like, hey, we've scored more than five runs in every game of this series. And, yeah, I know the lineup, but you get this guy out, and the lineup's going to change. I mean, they're using pinch hitters in every game. Yeah. And and which I think is really interesting. Sometimes one of the biggest gripes I've had about DH lineups is that you just go out there and you just play the game. And that's not the case. Like they're making moves. They're right. they're they're looking at matchups and so far they've done a, actually a really good job. Shelton has done a good job. Yeah. I mean, the Olivares pinch hit. I mean, there was a couple other moments where they they, they got a guy out. Today they put uh they put Michael A. Taylor in for Olivares and it worked out. You know what I'm saying? And it's so like it was like they're playing some matchups. And right now, I mean, you're winning four and oh, they're gonna work, right? If you're 0 right. 4, they're not working. That's basically how it goes. Uh, or I guess if they're working, you end up four and oh. If they're not working, you might end up 0 and 4, is how right. you it's right. the other way around, right? Um, but I, I gotta tell you, like, you know, I was texting with I was texting with Brock today. I don't know how much he's he's firing at you, but um, you know, I was just saying, like, hey, this is this whole thing, the comeback, the whole thing. This was right after Telez uh, hit the home run. It and and I kind of had this. This is a good lesson in baseball fandom, right? The team did not panic. Telez was 0, 0 for three with three Ks before that home run. He didn't pout. He kept grinding his at bats. Trust the process. There's nine innings for a reason. And how many mm -hmm. times did this team refuse to end the inning in this game, right? Let's talk about, I got this wrote down here. You got the second inning. You got an out. You got two singles. You got the second out. So, yeah, you've got guys on first and second, but you've got two down. Then you get an Alika Williams triple where we, we know really should have been a one RBI double, but either way. You get the triple that scores two. Then a six-pitch walk. Another walk to load the bases. Reynolds gets down one-two. Gets two balls. It's now a full count again. For, a full count for the first time in this game. Full count, two outs. Guys are going. Fouls off three, then gets an RBI single. Two more innings later, the fourth inning. First two guys out. You're already down, two down. Joe has a five pitch single. Reynolds walks. Hayes drives in Joe with a single. It's a one run game. Give up the home run. Fast forward to the seventh inning. Hayes walk. All of our singles. We're in business. All of a sudden, a fly out and a strikeout. And you think in your head, Pirates get two guys on, they can't bring them in, right? Yeah. And then Rowdy gets an at-bat to a full count, fouls off three, gets his pitch, three-run homer. This is the guy who's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. You just had two outs after you had two guys on. And even in that inning, you're saying we're done, mm -hmm. right? And then in the 10th, go-ahead run in after the bunts and all that stuff. Two runners on, two strikeouts. And you're like, here they go again. Except Hayes goes down 0-2, sees three more pitches, gets a single, loads the bases. Taylor draws a seven-pitch walk to score a run, grinding it out. You can't put this team away right now. Yeah. And in the first couple games, you started to feel like, ah, oh, these Pirates are up to their same old things, right? 
<laughs> and you look at it and you're like, yeah, there, Triolo had a two out RBI, two for 17 runners in scoring position, left 13 on. And a little bit more, a couple two out RBIs, Cruz and Joe, but three for 12, nine, uh, nine runners left on. Still scored seven runs in six runs and seven runs. And then nine runs in the next two games. And listen to this, man. Uh, two out RBIs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine runs. Seven of them came with two outs on Saturday. Uh, all of a sudden you're seven for 16 with runners in scoring position and you still leave 12 on base, but that's cause you had a bunch of people on base. So mm-hmm. that's going to happen 12 on base again, but you're five for 16, but, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. RBIs with two outs, Jake. That's yeah. that's so different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so different. It sure is. Uh, and that's one of the things that, like, once you got this team to two outs, it was like, yeah, I understand. We got guys on second, third. We're not getting that run in. And in the first yeah. game, you saw a lot of that where you were saying, we're not going to get that run in. We saw a little bit more putting the ball in play uh, with two outs rather than strikeouts than – you know, than you were in maybe specifically that first game. Yeah. But this is a team that's not going to quit, dude. No, they're going to battle. They're, they're, in, they're in for it. Like they're, they're here for it. It's uh, fun to watch. It's just yeah. fun to watch. Like, there's just not, no easy outs. I think that's the big right? thing, right? Why Ryan Weathers said after his game, he's like, man, I, I honestly think I threw the ball well. These guys just it, that out pitch is it's hard to put them away. And there was a couple times on in Saturday's game where it's like you had the you were one strike away from being out of the inning, and you threw double digits more pitching or more pitches yeah. to get out of that inning. Those are huge things for a team to move, especially in a four game series when you were like we played an extra inning game. Now let's get to their bullpen early, and they kept doing it like. You know, to 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 last Lazardo there, and yeah. and and then push Puck out early, and then they just kept doing it. Right? They taxed the bullpen. They had to call up somebody else, and they had to throw him for like three innings on Sunday, because you know, I mean, he faced he, Telez hit the three run homer off of that guy. He faced him again because they're like, dude, it's your game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like one of those yeah. things, and that's what you can do to a team in a four game set when you can make them use a lot of relief pitchers. And, you know, I just thought it was really good. I mean, that was the whole thing about Fleming going three innings uh, in Perez's game because they were like, we're, we're going to save this bullpen if we can. Uh, you know, I just really impressed by a lot of what we saw. Yeah. There's obviously still too many called strikes, too many strikeouts looking there was a couple, uh, specifically Jack Sawinski at bats, that just looked like the, the it was over before it got started. Um, and like I said, a lot of that is like, man, I'm not at game speed right now. I haven't, mm-hmm. I've barely played in two days, three days. I'm not at game speed, and you know he's still able to to have some good at bats. Yeah, I mean, you think <laughs> about Jack Sawinski for a second. We played our last. Spring training game on what Sunday? Yeah, and we didn't open the season till Thursday. And Did we, then no, we played one on Monday. I thought. Monday, yeah. Then we didn't start the season till Thursday, and he didn't play the first two games. Like, he, yeah he he got a, he got two at bats on on the opener. Um, I forget what he did the one at bat, but he walked. And then in the second game, and it was he came in late, right? In the second yeah. game, he was zero for two. No strikeouts still. And then they put him in to start against the lefty when it's like, I've got two at-bats a night, you know, whatever. One for yeah. five, two strikeouts, but he did hit the the RBI single that was that was big. And then he started again, one for six, two strikeouts. And the thing is, is like, he's, he's still okay right now. Like, there's still yeah. some at-bats that are good, but there's been at least two at-bats that were three pitches and like he swung at one of those six pitches, it felt like it might have been two, yeah. but that you know, just off the top of my head, like it just felt like that that at bat just kind of steamrolled him a little bit. And I think that and, and Telez had a bat a bat similar to that. 
uh, in one of the games where it was just like, you know, I looked up and it was like, crap, I'm, I'm going back to the dugout now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that there's some of those things that are still things that he's going to have to obviously just get into his routine and get playing some games. And maybe that game speed kind of a thing, uh, he can catch up to because right now that's what it looked like to me. Um, yeah. And it, it happened with a few guys at, at different points. It just seemed to happen a little more often with a guy like him. Um, but it is just kind of one of those things where you're saying, you know, early in the season, you got to get into routine, but it's also that this team is kind of waiting guys out, making them throw a ton of pitches, things like that. And sometimes that approach is going to get you eaten alive by a guy who comes out there and just throws you. I mean, he threw, I remember one of the at bats was maybe like two breaking balls and he fouled the second one off and then just pops a fastball in there and he just couldn't get the bat off his shoulder. He just, just locked him up, locked him up. And it's like, as a pitcher, you're like, wow, yeah, you got him as a fan. You're like, come on, man, swing the bat. You know what I mean? It's just like such a different, but there was another bat where it was like two hittable pitches and you're like, bro, Swing at that first one. But you know what, Jake? He had two at-bats that he swung at the first pitch, and he's 0 for 2 on those at-bats. So I also just, like, how do you say, yeah. oh, at least he didn't strike out? Like, no, I'd rather him just, like, find a pitch he can drive. And, you know, like I said, all this stuff comes around. You know he gets into a hot streak, but literally it's been three games that he's played. Yeah. Really, yeah, when you I come mean, to think of yeah. it. Two at-bats, two at-bats, and then two full games. Uh and so I feel like almost any reaction right now is an overreaction, right? Yeah, I mean, part of our reaction, I mean, we're we're four and we're on cloud nine a little bit right now, right? Yeah. We're a little hot. Yeah. We're a little running yeah. a little hot right now. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's fine. I'm not saying, you know, World Series, but we're pretty excited. Yeah. <laughs> so you're right though. It is. It's kind of an overreaction no matter what way you look at no matter what way you look at it. Yeah. Cause I mean, you can say we're the Jared Jones talk might be a little bit of an overreaction, but we've been seeing it most of the spring. This is a guy that was fighting for a job, like fighting for a spot. It's not yeah, like he was 16 working innings and didn't even give up a run. Right. Yeah. So I think we're okay on the reaction with him. Uh, yeah. And I mostly spoke about how I felt watching the game. Right. I not yeah, 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 how I'm yeah. like saying, well, he's, he's just a stud immediately. Yeah. Cy Young, let's go. Right. It's just how, how you feel. And you know oh, that yeah, there's a, you know that there's a path. Mm-hmm. It's a good call out. Uh, there was some rust. There's some still early season things. Base running. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you don't. We probably did see base running mistakes in in spring training, but you probably also said like they're not going to push. Like O'Neill Cruz is not going to tag up from second base on a fly ball to left field in spring training. Like, right. hey, take it easy. But in, in the beginning of the season when the games count, you might see some of that aggressiveness. And that's what we saw. And he got thrown out. I've got to tell you, man, that was a perfect throw. Yeah. And he wasn't out by a lot. I didn't like the decision to go there. But at right. the same time, like if he just throws it a little bit off, he might actually be there. And so, you know, yeah. what do you want? Do you want aggressiveness? Do you not want it? You know, you put a guy on third with one out in that case. So, right. you, you know, you do kind of like that, but I, you know, obviously I didn't think he was deep enough, uh, but either way. Uh, and then there was, you know, Henry Davis being sent home, certainly being waived, thrown out by a mile. And we had Josh Bell at first base, throw two guys out at home that you just were like, wait, I thought he couldn't throw. Okay. And uh, the other one was uh, we had O'Neill Cruz thrown out at home which was also, from what I'm hearing, and I didn't get to see the actual video on this or hear anybody talk about it, but when Triolo rounded second, um, the throw went home, it was cut off. Triolo is now in between, there's two outs. He's in between first. first, Did I say rounded second? He rounded first. Yeah. He's in between first and second, thank you. And he's now caught. Mm-hmm. If you're O'Neill Cruz or anybody on third, you're like, well, I got to try to score here because yeah. the inning's he going to end with me enough. with me standing, right? Yeah. So the thing is, I've heard that like Triolo's was sent there. Hey, get in a pickle. Let's get that running. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that was the case or not, 
but it seemed like that's what it just I'm, wasn't executed. That's what I'm hearing. It wasn't executed. Well, it was executed well by the Marlins. You know, they made the one throw. It was thrown home. He was out by a mile, and it was kind of one of those things. It, it seemed like uh, they executed well. There was hesitation on our side, and I think that's early season stuff. Yeah. I watched every single game on opening day. I do every year. I've got three monitors in front of me, essentially, with this one. I also have, I brought in a TV over there, which now is great because I've upgraded. Now I have a permanent 50-inch TV sitting over there. It's beautiful. It's actually it's like Dodgers Cardinals on right now, unless that game's over. Looks like that game, it's on commercials. Um, anyway, I watched them all. I saw quite a few base running mistakes where guys are just standing in the middle getting tagged out. Yeah. This stuff happens. So I'm just not getting caught up on, well, we can't run the bases. And I got texts saying, our base yeah, running sucks. And it's like, bro, it's just, you know what I mean? Like it's day yeah. one. And actually a lot of people complain about Henry Davis. And it's like, hey, it's not the play. It's not just the players. But like to say our base running is not good, it's okay to say our third base coach is not good. That's still part of the team. So it yeah. still fits. I'm not saying, well, they don't stink. They just have a bad coach. No, that means they stink because that coach is going to keep sending people. But <laughs> I don't know why I always have to clarify everything. But either way, the point is, is like there's things to work out. There's Absolutely. things to iron yeah. out here. But I did yeah, I mean, see it around the league. Yeah, I mean, you saw it with Shohei Otani around in second going to, th you know what I mean? All that stuff. It's like... Mm -hmm. The it Reds happens. had a couple. El Ellie got caught up in between second and third. That was a real like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Kind of a moment. <laughs> and so like, it's going to happen this early. Mm -hmm. It's a cross between, like I said, you don't test it in spring training because it's not worth it. Right. And just so you, you have a little bit of that, let's be over aggressive for a minute. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it it is what it is. I, I saw some good base running later in the series, but you're probably going to see maybe some other mistakes. It's fine. They, they should iron that out mm -hmm. in a couple weeks, right? Right. And then if right. they don't, then we can say, all right, this is becoming a problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Errors, same kind of a thing. Uh, I actually heard more, <laughs> more complaints about the field. It's been a long time since I've heard somebody say, well, that field's not in a good in good shape. Hmm. O'Neill Cruz took the one off the throat, which was not called an yeah. error. I mean, it was clearly an awful hop. Key had the one that like that you were talking about before we hit yep. record, where it was like bad hop, up really bad chest. hop. The first one by Key looked like it skipped uh, in an odd way, but not too odd for him to field it. He usually can handle that. Yeah. Um. But there was a couple other plays that that kind of on both sides that kind of were like, uh, I actually saw an interview with one of the Marlins players saying that he was pretty upset with them having the roof open. He's like, we play indoors. I don't know what they're doing. The sun was awful. We we can't see in the outfield. I don't know why they're doing that. Yeah, like I, I wonder. I wonder too. There was a there was a the Swinsky catch uh, when Barucky was pitching on Sunday. He kind of was like back, and then it was like, I don't know where the ball is. Then he had to run way over to catch the ball. I think that, that was made me a little nervous. I, I think that was the wind because earlier in the game, Triolo had to do the same exact thing on a really high, on a really high infield pop up. He had to do the same thing where he took off running towards first in order to catch the ball. And both of those, yeah. I did look back because I was like, man, Telez didn't look like his got all that affected. For what it's worth, 29-degree launch angle on Telez. Uh, Berger hit his with a higher velocity, but a higher angle, launch angle. Mm -hmm. So his got up higher in the air, which probably was why that wind kind of took it and kept it in the park, I bet, because that was a bomb off the bat. Yeah. And Sawinski went back for it, and I think mean, everybody thought it was there, and then all of a sudden he had to take off running. And I so right. I think that wind is not an issue in a dome, but with that roof open, it seemed like when it got to a certain height, it was messing with it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that was necessarily it, but with Triolo and Sawinski having to do that and a couple of foul balls that were hit that looked like they shouldn't have been as difficult as they were, 
Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, there were yeah. some things like that that I was like, okay, something, you know, and and they were, they were com- like the Marlins players were complaining about it, saying, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why all of a sudden we think we're going to do this. It also makes for a terrible broadcast. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, there's just a black wall there. And then all of a sudden it's, they readjust the exposure and it's, oh, so you barely get to see whether the ball's going to hit or not and all that stuff. So. Anyway, uh, Nationals uh, series coming up. Mm-hmm. We got games on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday with Tuesday off. I will say that they're calling for rain Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if they're canceled Monday, Tuesday might not be a good day either. Um, but if it's okay Tuesday, I wouldn't be surprised if they move Wednesday's game to Tuesday. <laughs> I, I just wouldn't be surprised if they overreacted some way that way. Um so we may I, get. I a would rain. honestly, I would be surprised on that one. <laughs> okay, we may get a rain out. Uh, Gonzalez yeah. versus McKenzie Core on um, Gore on Monday. Keller versus Trevor Williams uh, on Wednesday. Perez versus Josiah Gray on Thursday. Gray was four uh, four innings pitched, eight hits, seven runs, two homers, uh, two walks, six strikeouts against the Reds on the Reds opening day or home opener opening day on on, on opening day. So Josiah Gray is going to be kind of coming at you hot. Sure. A little bit of vengeance there. Um, so good one there. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we're wrapping it up here. Um, we're going to be at the home opener. Both of us are going to be there. We're going to be in town the night before. So we'll be there all day on on Friday uh, mm-hmm. at the game, hanging out after the game for a while, right? I think. I mean, they're going to have to kick yeah. me out of maybe um, – <laughs> I don't really know, but <laughs> excuse me, but we're going to be there. Um, it is in season, right? And so mm-hmm. uh, we've been talking about it. We are going to try to do Friday episodes as well this year. Um, so much to our, we were like, we're not going to do it. And then I was like, we kind of have to do it. So we're going to try to do one at the home opener. If things work well, then we'll have one on Friday. If not, um, beat the O's <laughs> win that series uh, we'll have Jared Jones I assume for the home opener super as as exciting his rain outs. it probably yeah that it might change you're right if, if we get a game rained out they might change the rotation a little bit and push it back um, if so we'll, well, we'll have Keller or Perez so maybe not I mean who knows right you just don't know so anyway um you got anything to finish it out? I mean, opening day here, man. I mean, we uh, the season started. We're rolling. Yeah, and we're off to a good start. So they do another. Nothing, I mean, nothing else you can ask for. Twenty and eight last year, but we started one and two. Right. So you're gonna play hot in the first month, and uh, let's do it again. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, happy April Fool's Day to everybody listening to this on Monday. Uh, we quit and stuff like that. <laughs> you never hear from us again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's not happening. Let's get out of here. All right. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Buck. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two October. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks!